So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear friends, it's a great honor and a pleasure to be here. Interoperative imaging is very common. We need it to make it easy and safe our life. It's especially very important in spine surgery. We need it to localize the surgical level. We need to do it to minimal invasive spine surgery. We need to have it for precise implant placement or control our reduction. The question is now, what offers intraoperative 3D imaging? 3D imaging gives you the third dimension, and that's especially important in spine surgery because you want to have the axial level. You want to see where your implant is really going. You need to have that for navigation as well, and you need to have that for more information because more information helps you to avoid significant mistakes. So how do you get your 3D imaging? Your 3D imaging can be predominantly achieved by fluoroscopy, like a 3D fluoroscopy, which you see in the upper line, or you can have your 3D imaging by an MRI scanner or a CT scanner intraoperatively. The MRI scanner is not really helpful because we have a lot of metal instruments, we have a lot of metal implants, so an MRI scanner in spine surgery is typically not helpful. So in other words, Either you have the fluoroscopy or the CT scanner in your OR to get a free dimension. How does a, such an intraoperative CT look like? In fact, it's very easy and simple and straightforward. You have your patient on your uh, uh, fluoroscopy or your uh, carbon table, and then you typically do not move the patient. You typically move the CT scanner on some kind of railway system. You're just going over the patient, and then you get your 3D imaging, which puts you directly into the computer, and you can use it for navigation, for example. So we have the privilege to use uh, fluoroscopy, 3D navigation, as well as the CT navigation now for more than 10 years. And I would like to talk to you about the similarities of these two procedures, as well as the differences. So in fact, it's very similar with regards to prerequisite. In both cases, you need a carbon table to make sure that you see what's on the table. The morphology of the patient has to be adequate. You see these rectangular structure covering the patient, and the patient is very big underneath. If you have such a big patient who does not fit into your CT scanner or your uh, fluoroscopy scanner, then you cannot use it, of course. And what is also very important, you need some kind of indication for your 3D scanning. That means that you should not do that in every case. You need an indication, and the reason for that is that you have some, let me say, similarities which are not really perfect. First of all, it's complex to cover the patient. You need to have the patient sterile, and that means that if you go with the patient through the scanners, this is generally endangering your sterility. And that makes a certain surgical risk, and therefore, you need a real indication for doing that. Additionally, it takes your surgical time. It adds time to your surgery and adds material and costs to your surgery, and that has to be kept in mind. The handling of these machines is quite complex, so that means that you need trained personnel. And you need to train personnel not only during working hours, if you want to apply that through an emergency, you have to also have these trained personnel on call. And there are some medical legal requirements, especially in Germany, for example. You need a radiologist to run your CT scanner. You cannot do that typically on your own. And another thing which is very similar in both things, it's easy connect to connect it to navigation. Nowadays, these machines make a really easy job. They directly put the data in your navigation system, and you can use it immediately, no difference between the systems. And with regards to precision, they are both much more precise than your typically 2D fluoroscopy or your 2D navigation. So that's easy and straightforward. But what's the difference? The difference is resolution. Which of the two pictures comes from the CT scanner and which one is from the 3D fluoroscopy? Correct, you're right. The one which the higher quality comes from the CT scanner and the other one from the 3D fluoroscopy. So there is definitely a difference in resolution of these two imaging technologies. There's another difference with regards to volume. 
So if you, you have a CT scanner, you can really depict huge volumes and you can navigate huge volumes while you are very limited in space and volume with your fluoroscopy scanner. What does it mean for your navigation? For your navigation, that means with the CT scanner, you do one scan, and with the fluoroscopy, you have to do multiple scans to get a segmental navigation option in these cases. Another difference is, of course, flexibility. You have seen the CT scanner. It is installed. In other words, it is in, fixed in the OR room. While your uh, fluoroscopy is, of course, mobile, you can move it everywhere. But that does not mean that it has to be appointed to a certain unit or department. Of course, your departments can move into these OR rooms, maybe day by day, another one. You can share it with your trauma surgeons or with your cardiologists if you want to. Another difference is the handling. Typically, your fluoroscopy is handled by your OR nurse or your OR personnel. With a CT scanner, you need a technical assistant. It means that you or your, yourself or your radiologist has to be on the spot to do the um, imaging. What about costs? It's approximately the fact that two to three between the 3D fluoroscopy and the CT scanner in the OR. And what about radiation? Once again, it's the fact of free for your patient. It's very similar for you and your personnel because you and your personnel are typically leaving the OR room the moment when the scanner runs. So what about science between the two, the interoperative 3D imaging with fluoroscopy or a CT scanner? In fact, there is very limited science available. There seems to be less radiation, as already mentioned, with the fluoroscopy. The CT scanner seems to be more precise. The infection rate is very similar, and both are cost-effective in, uh, in considering a lower revision rates if you do the imaging. Let's have a look at some cases. When do we do either fluoroscopy navigation or when do we do CT navigation? That's a case of a 24-year-old. He has a motor vehicle accident two days ago, so he has neck pain. But if you look closer, you see that obviously in situ something's wrong. And if you do a CT scan, you uh, incidentally see this tumor up here. And most of you will already know that's a benign tumor, obviously, but the benign tumor is obviously compressing the vertebral artery on the right side, so it most likely has to be operated. And if you look closer at the angio CT, you can see that the vertebral artery is very much compressed by this osteoblastoma. In fact, you have to operate on this, and in these cases, we use the CT scanner. And the reason for that is very simple. You need to have high precision. If you want to decompress the vertebral artery up there and you want to remove the complete tumor, you have to be absolutely sure that you do that. Otherwise, you will get the recurrency and you will get problems. So in these cases where we need a high precision, we use the CT scanner, and that's what we did. We resected the tumor, we did an end anterior stabilization of the segment, and you see 18 months post-operative, no recurrency, and solid fusion of the segment. That's another case, uh, a case with a young lady who has a very significant thyroid cancer which is going into the spine, and you see the resection, or you see the amount of uh, tumor which is covering the whole cervical spine as well as the upper thoracic spine, and you see the resection of that, and in these cases you need to have a look, or you should have a look, at the high volume. And if you need the high volume, once again, the CT scanner is the one which you should use for navigating something like that. That's another case. That's a case of a very young lady, once again. It's a lady who had neck pain after floor exercises during school. And incidentally, once again, you see this type of cystic formation in the odontoid. And what you see here is obviously, once again, a benign tumor. And most of you already have realized that is an ABC an aneurysmatic bone cyst. And so these aneurysmatic bone cysts are typically resected. 
In these cases, when it's very in the front, you resect it via a transoral approach, and you do an additional stabilization, a protective stabilization, making sure that's not breaking. And after resecting the cyst, you fill it up with bone crafts via the transoral approach. And this is obviously done by the ICC scanner. The ICC scanner is highly flexible. It has less radiation in the lung, young lady. And so we do it in this case with the fluoroscopy. That's after surgery, you see the protective stabilization, and you see that over time, that's after three months, this gap is filling, the bone graft is uh, rebuilding the odontoid, and finally, after six months, you see that the complete odontoid is now refilled with bone, and then you can remove the protective posterior stabilization, and the patient will get mobility back again. The final case, that's a case, a complex case, that's a recurrent chordoma. You see the patient has already been previously operated, there's some fusion in between, but if you have a closer look at the CT scan, you see that obviously there's still some bone tumor over there, there's a big void over there, but this big void is obviously the tumor. If you look at this MRI scan, you see a big recurrency of the chordoma. And in these cases, with the implants in place, you cannot, cannot do any radiation for the patient. You have to perform an additional surgery. And that's for the first part of the surgery from the back. You remove everything in the back, and then you go to the front, and you remove en bloc the complete two vertebras, including the cage, and you can see after the decompression, you can see the dural sac and the nerve roots from the front as well. And in these cases, we once again use uh, to, to resect that whole thing. You see the, uh, on the lower right side, you see the, 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 the cage in place in the tumor. And in these cases, once again, we use the T CT scan for doing the osteotomies to resect the tumor. And the reason for that is, once again, you need the precision of the CT, making sure that you take everything out. So that's what we call in Germany an eierlegende Wollmilchsau. You don't have something like that here. We don't have something like that in Germany as well. The ad delivering wool milk pick is something which does not exist. In fact, if you want to have something, you have to make compromises. And if you want to have an interoperative CT scanner, you get high resolution and high volume to depict, but you have on the other side high costs and high radiation doses. Uh, on the other hand, if you use this ISO CD 3D scanner, you are flexible, you are mobile, you are compact, and you are cost efficient, but you have a limited quality of imaging and a limited volume to depict. So in other words, if you're highly specialized, you might think about the CT. If you do spine on a regular basis, but you do not have the big tumor cases, maybe an ISO C 3D navigation would do as well. So thank you very much. At the end of the day, the conclusion is both are valuable and both are very helpful in spine surgery. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, me invite Dr. Thomas uh, uh, Blattert uh, for video and navigation assisted 360 reconstruction techniques in thoracolumbar fractures. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thanks again for the invitation. Dear friends, uh, this topic just uh, continues on uh, intraoperative navigation. And um, I would like to uh, switch the focus now from uh, a little bit of tumor surgery that we heard uh, more to, towards um, uh, a traumatic uh, surgery. So waiting for the first slides. Thank you. Um, this is just uh, starting with the, with the case of a 29-year-old. This is a B-type, uh, a 